Hello people, welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be talking about the brand new illustrated edition of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. I've been looking forward to this coming out. It's been two weeks since the Prisoner of Azkaban illustrated book. Goblet of Fire is one of my favorite books and films. And yeah, it's, it's so heavy, which you'd expect because it's one of the biggest books. This is what we're going to be talking about today. Let's take a closer look at the cover. So it says, J.K. Rowling, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, illustrated by Jim Kay, as all of them are. And the front cover is Harry going up against the Hungarian Horntail in the first task of the trial was a tournament. You can just see the golden egg as well, there are people in the audience and as you turn it over there's the other side of the dragon. I think that's quite cool. There's actually a quote on the back that says I love seeing Jim Kay's interpretation of Harry Potter's world and I feel honoured and grateful that he continues to lend his talent to it. J.K. Rowling. We all are because it just wouldn't be the same if anyone else illustrated these books and you can't just stop halfway through the series. You've got to do the whole series. So yeah, I do love Jim Kay's illustrations. I do have the other three illustrated books. If you take the sleeve off, it's a very beautiful blue colour and it just says Harry Potter the Goblet of Fire illustrated by Jim Kay, J.K. Rowling. But I'm actually going to take this off because it's going to be very difficult to flick through the pages with that sleeve on it. I'm actually just going to turn it over and show you guys this way. So this is what we see on the first page. So that is a, I guess that's the squid. That's the squid. It took me a little while because I thought it was just a massive octopus, but that must be the giant squid that lives in the dark lake. And there's a wizard there selling some things on a stool. It looks kind of like Dumbledore. Uh, a bit random, but I like these illustrations. They're really cool. And then we have the chapters, that's looking quite funky. Oh, and we start off the first chapter, The Riddle House. Oh, obviously one of my favourite things about these books are the illustrations. I really like that you can just read along and you can look at stuff and it just makes you feel, it gives you this, a similar kind of experience that watching the films does where you can actually see the things that you're reading about but you're still reading the original story which is better than just watching the films because as much as I love the films, they're not canon, the books are. So yeah, we have little images here with Frank Bryce. I love that every page is coloured, they're not just white, plain colours. Uh, there's a scared looking Harry with his thunderbolt with some snake scales, that looks quite, quite freaky. I'm sorry, there's a bit of a glare. I had to turn my main light on because it's kind of dark and rainy and horrible outside. <laughs> so I'm not getting much natural light from outside. Chapter two, the scar. So this is quite normal pages, I suppose, because, and chapter three, chapter one was a short chapter. Well, I suppose that's just him talking about the nightmare he had. I'm obviously not gonna go through every page on this video because that's just gonna make the video so, so long. I'm just gonna point out some of the more beautiful illustrations. Here is an image of Ron in his bedroom. Everywhere is covered in orange because he's a massive supporter of the Chudley Cannons. This is a beautiful page. This is so pretty. So this is obviously all of the crew, the Weasleys, Harry, Hermione, all going up towards the port key for the Triwizard a tournament. Look how beautiful that tree is and that sky. And then on the next page, you have the other side where there are the diggeries going up towards the portkey as well. Or they're at the portkey maybe because one of them is holding a boot. Here is a double page spread of the campsite at the Triwizard Tournament. Again, beautiful colours, beautiful artwork. And it's something you can just stare at for ages because you just pick out different things. No matter how many times you look at things like this, you, there's always gonna be things that you've missed. So like, did you notice the guy in the top hat who has a what looks like a rubber duck or maybe a wooden duck. It's really cool, there's a little owl coming out of that periscope type thing. We're on the Dark Mark chapter now and here is an image of the Death Eaters making that muggle family float around above them. Here is a lovely image of the Hogwarts Express going over the viaduct. I pointed this one out by the way because next week I'm going to Scotland and I will be taking the train over said viaduct. So yeah, I'm really excited about that. There will be videos all about my Scottish Scotland adventures because I'm going to try and visit loads of Harry Potter locations. So. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. This must be a very young blast-ended Scroot. The blast-ended Scroots are getting bigger. <laughs> We're on Bow Battons and Durmstrang now. Now this is really beautiful. So this is the flying horses 
pulling the carriage, the Beau Baton's carriage towards Hogwarts. That is so beautiful. Look at those horses. They're, they're not looking too happy, are they, actually? <laughs> Jim Kay's interpretation of Rita Skeeter. She doesn't look as pleasant, shall we say, as she does in the films. <laughs> Another beautiful, stunning image of one of the dragons. I'm guessing this is the Hungarian Horntail with his little golden egg just underneath. He's pelting out a load of fire. And on the next page, we got Harry running away, flying away from the said fire. We're on the chapter of the House of Liberation Front and there's an update on Abe Larson's Scroot looking quite gruesome and scary looking. I wouldn't have liked to have been anywhere near them. We're now on to the Yule Ball, very Christmassy and just again, beautiful illustrations of people in their dresses. There's Ron, obviously. There's an unhappy looking house elf. Do I recognize anyone else? So that must be Hermione and Crumb. Because Hermione, I remember, has her hair pinned back and she wears a blue dress in canon. Here's Harry rescuing Ron and Fleur Delacour's little sister. Again, the colors are so beautiful. Harry and Cedric have found the Triwizard Cup. Oh, we all know what's about to happen, but again, beautiful illustration. This, this is one of my favorite ones that I've seen. So look at that, look at that color, look at that yellow color. So there's Harry, there's all the Death Eaters, Voldemort on the other side, and then all of these images of his parents, Frank Bryce, Cedric, all there, so in Priory and Cantatum. Oh, that is, so, that is so nice, but heartbreaking at the same time, because you know what's going on. And yeah, that gold is just so, so, sharp and so beautiful. I guess this is meant to be Mad-Eye Moody. He looks much scarier than he does in the films and I approve. I think that's how they should have made him in the films. <laughs> Here is Rita Skeeter in a jar. That actually would be a very good prop replica idea. Geek gear. I'm talking to you guys. I know another subscription box has done something like it recently but I didn't think it was that good. I think Geek Gear could do a better job. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. And that's it. That's my little flip through of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire illustrated edition. Illustrated by Jim Kay. Overall, an absolutely fantastic version of the original story. A beautiful book. Every illustration that's in this book is just wonderful and stunning, as I've said all the way through. And pictures that you just love to look back on and just stare at and just really dive into the story, dive into the images themselves. You can get lost in this book. You can get lost in this book even more than you can, I feel, in the original stories because there are images to go along with it and that's why I collect them, why I will continue to collect them. And yeah, I'm looking forward to reading The Goblet Fire again with the illustrated version. I absolutely love the book. Let me know what you guys thought down in the comments below. Do you own the book? Are you hesitant about owning the book or any of the other in the illustrated series because you don't know if they're gonna be worth it? Maybe you think you're not gonna read them. But for me, I feel like they're definitely worth to collect because even if you never end up reading the illustrated books. It's still really good to actually look back at the images and they're good for Instagram photos anyway so there's that. So yeah I'm gonna leave it there. If you enjoyed this video please don't forget to leave a like because that would mean a lot to me. If you're new to my channel and you haven't already then why not subscribe to join my little magical corner. Thank you all very much for watching and I will see you next time.